Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, Father God. You are faithful and true and good. Thank you that you are in control. Thank you that we don't have to live with fear. We don't have to live with anxiety. Thank you that you are our strength and our comforter and our healer, our deliverer. You are so trustworthy, God. You are so filled with love. Thank you for the gift of your wonderful Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, pick us up. Send us on our way. Open our eyes and our ears and our hearts and our minds to your word today. Amen. Exodus chapter 1 These are the names of the sons of Israel, that is, Jacob, who moved to Egypt with their father, each with his family, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, Benjamin, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. In all, Jacob had 70 descendants in Egypt, including Joseph, who was already there. In time, Joseph and all of his brothers died ending that entire generation. But their descendants, the Israelites, had many children and grandchildren. In fact, they multiplied so greatly that they became extremely powerful and filled the land. Eventually, a new king came to power in Egypt, who knew nothing about Joseph or what he had done. He said to his people, Look, the people of Israel now outnumber us and are stronger than we are. We must make a plan to keep them from growing even more. If we don't, and if war breaks out, they will join our enemies and fight against us. Then they will escape from the country. So the Egyptians made the Israelites their slaves. They appointed brutal slave drivers over them, hoping to wear them down with crushing labour. They forced them to build the cities of Pithon and Ramesses as supply centres for the king. But the more the Egyptians oppressed them, the more the Israelites multiplied and spread and the more alarmed the Egyptians became. So the Egyptians worked the people of Israel without mercy. They made their lives bitter, forcing them to mix mortar and make bricks and do all the work in the fields. They were ruthless in all their demands. Then Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, gave this order to the Hebrew midwives. Shipra and Pua. When you help the Hebrew women as they give birth, watch as they deliver. If the baby is a boy, kill him. If it is a girl, let her live. But because the midwives feared God, they refused to obey the king's orders. They allowed the boys to live too. So the king of Egypt called for the midwives. Why have you done this? He demanded, why have you allowed the boys to live? The Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, the midwives replied. They are more vigorous and have their babies so quickly that we cannot get there in time. So God was good to the midwives and the Israelites continued to multiply, growing more and more powerful. 
and because the midwives feared God, he gave them families of their own. Then Pharaoh gave this order to all his people. Throw every newborn Hebrew boy into the Nile River, but you may let the girls live. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Father, I thank you that in this situation you have things in hand. You prophesied to Abraham that his descendants would find themselves in a dark situation, that they would be made slaves. And here we see it. I thank you that even though things seem to beginning seem to be beginning to get out of control, nothing has surprised you. Thank you that nothing takes you by surprise in our lives. No circumstance, no situation. Father, I praise you that even though the Egyptians were oppressing your people, the Israelites, that they still continued to grow and multiply. Nothing can stand in the way of your plans, absolutely nothing. You plan to continue to multiply the descendants of Abraham. Praise you, Lord, and help us to learn something from the Hebrew midwives, to fear you alone, Father God, and no other. They were told to kill any boy by Pharaoh, but they pleased you instead and let the boys live. Thank you, Father. Help us to stand up for the things that you stand for and to obey you rather than yield to any other pressure. Amen.